mwenye kiti cha enzi umejivika utukufu wewe ni Mungu umeketi juu sana kwenye kiti cha enzi umejivika utukufu
Bwana ni wewe pekee yako wastahili utukufu na heshima. Ni wewe wastahili kupewa heshima na mamlaka mfano. Shauku ya moyo wako Bwana ni kwamba ni kwa mtu. Kama mfalme ni kazidi kudumu katika uwepo wako. mfalme mkafanye makao katika moyo wangu Ninapenda kila asubuhi kila uchao kila chioni mfalme nikakuabudu katika kweli na katika roho mfalme Shauku yangu mfalme ni kwamba ni kuabudu katika ufahamu wa neno lako katika kuelewa kanuni zako mfalme Mama mfalme kutia zangu Kutembea kwangu kunena kwangu Bwana mkawe sawia na neno lako
ya nyoyo zetu ni kwamba tukufahamu ni kwamba bwana tukasidi kushirikiana na wewe mfano mama bwana ibada zetu ufame zikakumalike mbele zangu
Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Eh hey, unajua kuna sifa unapewa. Shetani akikuona na kam na fusi. Haleluya. Kwa hivyo ningependa wale ambao mko pande huu tuje tutafadhali hapa pande hii juu kugeuka sana na wale ambao tuko pale tukaribia tafadhali. Na itakuwa ni ya baraka. Nimewaomba tu tafadhali tuje hapa mbele yangu ndio tuweze kufungua na kuendelea na maandiko. Haleluya. Eh kwa wale ambao hawanijui ninaitwa Isaac Mwisia Aa, na nimeokoka na mpenda Yesu Kristo. Kuna simu ambazo nikiona kwa hii kanisa zikipigwa ninakaza mshipi. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Eh? Ningeomba tu tuketi tuketi. Simu ya kwanza ni ya mchungaji Mwithi, mchungaji Dickson, Eldangene na mzee Kimani. Nikiona hizo simu nakaza nini? So juma hili aliweza kunipigia akasema kwamba nitashiriki neno. Uh, ningependa tuweze tafadhali tuweze kusafiri pamoja mi si wa kusisimka kwa hivyo hamtasikia sauti yangu ikienda juu tutazungumza na tusome pamoja media team tuko pamoja ni verse after verse sawa kwa hivyo tuwe, tuangalie kitabu cha mwanzo genesis i know that god is faithful anaenda kuniwezesha we wacha wacha nitafute wacha nitafute I, I had prepared something small to share with us from the book of Genesis 2 verse 15 and uh, I gave it a title the process of becoming the intention of God when he created man was that man may have dominion over all creation and uh, the fall of man was not a mistake God does not have an afterthought. Bonnes was So there is a process for all of us to become something in the house of God. Hallelujah. Eh, kwa hivyo tunaweza soma kitabu cha mwanzo Genesis 2 and verse 15. Ama nibadilishe kidogo. Nani anaweza nisomea ndio tushirikiane. Moja tu wasimame kizungu Kiswahili Thank you to 17 Yes Thank you. Bonesu asifiwe. So this was something that God planned. Bonesu asifiwe. And when he created man, there are two accounts of creation. Bonesu asifiwe. Wacha nirudi kwa ile first account kisha turudi kwa hii uh, e context amba unimesoma. Uh, Genesis 1 speaks of the creation in the spiritual realm. Bonesu asifiwe. Creation where from day one, God created everything. Day two, day three, day four, day five, and day six. Everything was created in the spiritual realm. And you discover in, in the first account of creation that man was created last. That is in Genesis 1.27. Bonesu asifiwe. Uneza nipeleka pale tu ni isome kidogo. 1.27, man was created last. And both male and female were created on the same time. In the spiritual realm, there is no difference between a man and a woman. Before God in the spiritual realm, we are all equals. So these two people were created in Genesis uh, 1.27. In Asema, these people were created in someone. So God created man in his own image. He created him in the image of God. He created them male and female. So in this context, you find that man and woman were created at the same time. If you go to 28, 2028, now what God wanted man to do and woman is here. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, rule 
the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, and every creature that crawls on the earth. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. So what God wanted from man and a woman was that we may have dominion over every creation. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Nataka kuuliza saa hii, do we have the dominion over all the creation? Tuko nayo. Hello, niliwambia leo tunaongea, mimi sita. Eh? Tuko nayo. Kwa hivyo tunaendelea, we are heading to perfection. Leo nataka kuonyesha kwamba hatujafikisha ukamilifu. Toka hapa elekea Masai Mara. Simba ndio hii, simama. Ikinguruma my friend. Watakupata nje ya gate. Hallelujah. So dominion is not yet in us. Because Adam used to walk in the garden of Eden, anapatana na simba ambayo imeumia imejikua, anaiangalia na papasa. But leo jaribu hata kaumbwa kale ka nyumbani kameumia. Kakibweka unaso. So we are not yet we've not yet received the fullness of Christ in us. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. So when we go to Genesis uh, 2 and verse uh, verse 15 for the Lord God took the man. Now, hapa in the second account of creation, man is create, created first. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Ukisoma kutoka juu na ningependa uende nyumbani na usome kutoka juu, unagundua kwamba waliingia Ulimwengu ilikuwa tu hivyo hakukuwa na mmea hata mmoja Bwana Yesu asifiwe Now there was a garden of Eden Eastwards of the garden God planted another garden Bwana Yesu asifiwe Ama muna shuku kile ninachosema Inasema and the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden uh, Ion 15 to dress it and to keep it and the Lord God commanded the man saying Ob- uh huh. Saying of every tree of the garden, I'm looking for something. Uh, verse eight. Sorry. Nasema. And the Lord God planted a garden eastwards in Eden. So there was a gar- a garden of Eden, but God planted another garden inside Eden. And this was the place that God wanted man to rule from. So when the Bible says that we will be going back to paradise, we will go, be going back to the position of leadership that God wanted us to be. We will be going back to the position of authority that God wanted us to live in. When you read this verse, you discover that Adam lived in abundance. Hallelujah. Biblia sema kwamba out of the ground Mungu alisababisha kukamea miti ambayo inapendeza kwa macho ambayo ni nzuri kwa chakula. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Na unadiscover kwamba kila kitu ambacho Adam alihitaji kwa ajili yake kuishi ilikuwa katika shamba hili ambalo Mungu alipanda uh, mashariki ya shamba la Edeni. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. So everything that Adam needed was there in that garden. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. So uh, 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 and there is something interesting. If you read here, you, you discover that there is something interesting. Nowadays, to natafuta uwepo wa mungu. Hallelujah. But here, Adam had him. Biblia nasema kwamba, in the cool of the day, God used to come and fellowship with Adam. Bwana sifiwe. Day and night, we spend sleepless nights to kiomba, that we may see the face of God in our lives. That we may see the face of God in, with the presence of God in our families and our nation. But here, Adam had everything, including the presence of God. Bwana sifiwe. Uh, if we look at Genesis... Uh, uh, if we look at Genesis 3... 22 and 24, there's something interesting that happened. Because in the garden, there were two trees in the midst. There was one, the tree of life. Two, there was the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And these two trees represented the trinity of God in the garden. Because God the Father used to come in the cool of the day. In Greek, in Etwarwak, meaning that they used to commune with Adam in the spirit. Saatisa, Igifika, Adam used to transfigure and go into the spiritual realm so that they can commune with God. Now, there was something else. There was the tree of life in that garden. 
that was planted eastwards of Eden. And that tree of life represents Jesus Christ. How do I know that? Let us go to Genesis 3, 22 and, uh, 22 and 24. The Bible says, The Lord God said, Since man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil, he must not reach out and also take from the tree of life and eat. After eating, what will happen? He will live forever. Who gives eternal life? Is it not Jesus Christ? Hello? Let us look uh, uh, in the book of John 10, 27. 10, John, verse 27 and 28. We are going to discover that Jesus was with Adam in the Garden of Eden. Hello? So everything that God had planned was that man may have dominion. And in the garden, alikuwa pale na Adam. Now, 27 says that my sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. 28. I give them eternal. Hello? This was Jesus Christ speaking to the disciples and to the congregation that had come. Akawambia kwamba he gives what? Kwamba yeye ndiye anapea na uzima. So these are evidences showing us that Christ was in the garden planted eastwards of Eden. John 3.16, the famous verse about Najua. For God so loved the world that whoever believes in him but have. So if you believe in the son who is Jesus Christ, you will have what? So Adam had everything that he wanted to rule over all creation. The tree of knowledge of good and evil was the Holy Spirit. The, uh, let us look at uh, the book of Isaiah 1 and verse 2. We will discover uh, that the tree, of the, uh, the tree of knowledge of good and evil was the Holy Spirit. Listen, heavens... And pay attention, earth, for the Lord has spoken. I have raised children and brought them up, but they have rebelled. Cheremuke. Tenda chini chini afikiri. There is somewhere that I'm looking for. Bibli na sema kwamba, and the Spirit will give you wisdom, knowledge. Hello. Those are the gifts of the Holy Spirit. He gives what? Wisdom and knowledge. So in the Garden of Eden, there was this tree that if you would have eaten of it, you will have the knowledge. And knowledge is in two dimensions. There is the knowledge of good and there is the knowledge of evil. And all of these come with, from the Holy Spirit. If you eat it, because these were meant for Adam, but the time was not yet due. So Adam amua tu waende kinyume na maagano ya mungu. Praise God. So God had planned, God had given an order that you shall not eat from these trees. Praise God. And the order was given to Adam. Hey, wanaume tuna responsibility ngumu. Because God gives you an order for your family. But you have to communicate to your wife. And to your children. When I was you. So Adam wali tuangusha kama mandume. Hello? Haku peana order ya mungu. Ambo ilikuwa tusile. Praise God. When I was you. So if. And something funny and interesting is that. When Satan came. Adam was there with Eve. Anasikia shetani ya kiongelesha Eve. Amenyamaza. And yet God had commanded them not to eat of the tree. So after now the fall of man, God began a process of restoring us back to himself. And that is what we are going to discuss today. That the process of becoming. Hello? So when you look at whatever took place in the Garden of Eden, you discover that God has a plan for man. 
hata baada ya kupata Adamu ametenda dhambi hakumuua Remember he told them that if you eat of that tree you shall surely die But because God is full of mercy alimuita Adamu had introduced something else that we today have introduced in our lives Bwana sifiwe After Adam realizing that he was naked hakutubu Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Alienda katafuta nini? Fig leaves. Akafunika imagine. I don't know kuna mtu anajua matawi ya fig leaf inafananaje? Si kubwa ni tudogo tudogo. Imagine umejifunika na fig leaf na ukuje kanisani Jumapili. Alafu jua igonge ikauke. Utaibika aje. So Adam had introduced these fig leaves are a representation of religion. Bwana Yesu We have introduced religion in our lives. Praise God. Wakati unaona kitu inafanyika, unakimbia wapi? Kwa dini. Unasema kanisa letu tunafanya hii. Unajaribu kuleta ile dhambi na kuipaka nini? Mafuta. That is what Adam did. Adam had already committed sin lakini kwa sababu ameona ako uchi badala amlilie Mungu aweze kumsamehea aka introduce nini dini na Biblia nasema kwamba wafarisayo wanajua njia ya kumwelekea Mungu lakini wamesimama kwa njia kuwazuia watu kumfikia nani Halo Tunajua ukweli kwamba hii ndiyo njia ya kwenda kwa Mungu. Hii ndiyo njia ya kufanyika wana kamili. Lakini bado hatutaki kutembea katika njia hiyo. Ndio maana tunajiletea na kujilimbikiza kwa vitu. Halo. Mchungaji analala usiku baada ya kula ugali na nyama na maziwa lala, anafikiria, he, anaota. Anasema watu waje wabatizwe wapite chini ya bendera. Halo. Maandiko yanasema hivyo kweli. Hiyo ndiyo vitu ambayo tunajiwekea. Mtu analala usiku anatafakari anasema kesho nikienda nitawanyunyizia maji. Kutoka leo hiyo itafanyika kwa ubatizo. Je, hiyo ndiyo maandiko inatuambia. Hiyo ndiyo vitu ambayo tumejiletea kama wanadamu. Lakini Mungu ana lengo ya kutufanya kuwa wana wake. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. If we look at the book of John 14:23, unagundua una kwamba Kristo alikuwa na kusudi ya kutufanya wana wake John 14:23 You discover that there is something that God had there was a plan that God had for mankind Haleluya Haleluya Eh naona watu wanashangaa Mungu ametupa neema Hi John 4:23 Jesus answered If anyone loves me he will keep my word My father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Now what the Bible is telling us and the writer of John 14:23 is that if we obey the word of God, if we align ourselves with the will of the Father, the Father and the Son will come and make a home with us. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Kwa hivyo kila ambacho tunahitajika hii inatuonesha kwamba kuna kitu ambacho tunafaa kufanya ili Mungu Baba na Mungu Mwana wareje kwa ile upendo ambayo ilikuwa pale katika shamba la Edeni. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Kwa hivyo we have a responsibility for us to do so that we can go back to that love. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. And something uh, that uh, while I was reading and niligundua is that Satan is doing whatever he was created to do. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. He is helping you and me to become sons and perfect sons of God. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Usiku na mchana wewe ukiwa umelala yeye hajalala. Halo? Ukiwa busy unapiga mshene pale unafanya vitu vyako vya dunia yeye ako bumper to bumper na wewe. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Ukiguduka tu kidogo ndio huyu anafanya kile ambacho alipewa kufanya kwa maisha yako. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. If we look at the book of Job 1:6, Satan appeared with the sons of God. Was it a mistake that Satan appeared in heaven with the sons of God? Is it a mistake? Hello. 
ni makosa kwa shetani kujitokeza na wana wa Mungu pale mbinguni. Alikuwa amejitokeza kuripoti kile ambacho ametoka kufa. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Na wakati alijitokeza Mungu akamuuliza, "Aha, na we umekuja. Je, umemuona mwana wangu Ayubu?" Hello. Have you considered my son Job? Na shetani akamwambia, "Ah, mimi nimetokea huku na huku na kule na kwa kweli nimemuona. But you have raised a wall of protection around him." Bwana Yesu asifiwe. So, Satan knows na anajua yule wa kuguza na yule si wa kuguza. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. If you become a son, shetani hatacheza na wewe. Bwana because he knows that you know your position in the kingdom in the household of the father Bwana Yesu asifiwe so god permitted him akamwambia ai si nivenye umemlinda ukinikubalia tu kidogo mimi nitamguza na taasi Bwana Yesu asifiwe the bible says that god permitted him akamwambia enda ufanye hii na hii na hii na hii shetani akateremka kwa nani kwa yubu akaguza kila kitu chake lakini Mungu alimwambia lakini usiguze nini uhai wake kwa maana yeye ndiye ambaye anapeana uhai kwa hivyo wakati shetani alishuka kwa nyumba ya Ayubu aliguza kila kitu hata mwili wake na akafanya mke kile na nishangaza ni ati mke yakuguzwa hiyo tu ndio bado sielewi mke alibaki pale ndiye akuwe donda sugu Bwana Yesu asifiwe Ayubu alikuwa anaamka hivi bibi anamwambia kufuru bwana ufe. Mtukane Mungu amekuacha. Unaenda unatoa arms, unatoa dhabiu lakini amekuacha. Kufuru. Lakini Job knew his position and knew who God was to his life. And he stood for God. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Through all the trials that Job underwent alisimamia ukweli bwana yesu asifiwe can you stand today as job when your businesses are touched when your children are touched when your family is shaken by the devil uje utasimama ama utasema hii wokovu a a yesu kaa hapa mimi nikae hapa na tuendelee na safari bwana yesu asifiwe Uh, in the book of Luke 22:31 again Satan is asking Christ ali, aliambia Peter that Satan has asked to sift you like wheat. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. So, hii ni evidence kwamba whatever that is happening in our lives God allows them so that we can become perfect sons so that we can mature tuache kukunywa maziwa na tuanze kukula minofu. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Unajua hata mtoto mdogo akipewa maziwa na mama yake baba apitishe mfupa. Mtoto anafuatanga nini? Kamfupa vile kana eh? Anatamani hiyo mfupa. Lakini je, katika mwili wa Kristo, unatamani kula minofu? Do you desire to eat real food? Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Ama bado unafurahia ukinyonya maziwa ya kiroho. Unanyonya tu uko pale, unanyonya tu uko pale. Tamani tamani kukomaa katika Kristo Bwana Yesu asifiwe because that is the desire of God Bwana Yesu asifiwe When we look at the, uh, Matthew 4:1 the spirit of the Lord led Jesus into the wilderness Bwana Yesu asifiwe and he led him into the wilderness to be tempted Bwana Yesu asifiwe So now we are going to look at three things that are tested in our lives so that we can mature So when the spirit of the Lord after Jesus was baptized the spirit of the Lord descended na tunajua what happened the heavens were opened and a voice was heard saying that this is my beloved son from there the spirit of God came upon him and led him into the wilderness Bwana Yesu asifiwe Biblia iseme kwamba ilimuongoza aende akafanye kitu kingine aa aende akapiga sherehe hapana ilimuongoza ili akue tempted ili akajaribiwe bwana asifiwe so there are three things that are tested in our lives bwana yesu asifiwe the first thing is the lust of the flesh the second thing is the lust of the eyes and the third thing is the pride of life bwana yesu asifiwe all these three things were tested 
in Adam in Genesis 1. When it was in the book of Genesis, let us look at Genesis 3 6. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 6. These things were tested in him, and uh, Adam failed with flying colors. Eh. Now, let us read. The Bible says that the woman saw that the, th uh, the tree was good for food. What did the woman do? She saw. Wakati aliambiwa tazama. That was the test of the eyes. Now, siku ya leo, nika kwa, niku unifraisha, tukiongea na etikio kwa barabara tunatembea, anajua gari zote zinapita. Atapita, shu, ata ujeona na kwambia ni Subaru Impreza. Ni nini ya mefanya? Ameona. Bwaneswa sifiwe. So there are those things that are pleasing to the eyes. Ana hapo ndiyo mtego inakuanga. Unatamani dress fra, uh, flani wa kinadada. Eh, kamarinda mzuri mzuri kidogo. Hiyo. You can do anything to acquire that. Sorry to say squeeze. What wame fikia a level of, il, of even uh, selling their body so that they can achieve something. We flani ya 100,000 avalia kwa kichwa. Hello? Kwa nini? Ifuraishe macho. Now, when the woman saw that the fruit from that tree was appealing to the eye and good for food and she was delighted alifuraishwa kuifanya nini? Now, it was desire, desirable for obtaining. Ilikuwa mzuri kwa tumbo. Now, that is the desire of flesh. Bada ya kuipata, anatamani kuwe yake. Mwili inatamani. Eh? Nikuwe na gari mzuri, mwili inatamani. Sita tembea sana. Niki cruise, watu watawana niko na machine. Bwanesu wa sifiwe. Kuna wale wanasema wakona gari na wale wakona machine. So, tunatamani kwamba tuwe na hizo. Now, another thing that was tested in them for obtaining what? Wisdom. That was the pride of life. Siku ya leo uneza jitazama kwa hivi vitu tatu. Ni ipi ambayo hauko sawia nayo. What is failing you? Because day to day, ukiamuka asubui, there is nothing else that the devil comes to test in you. Hakuna kitumpia ni hizi tatu. How do I know this? Let us look at Jesus. When he was led into the wilderness to be tempted, there were three things that happened. The first thing was, kwa hulu wanajua yu hadithi, nini ilifanyika ya kwanza, onyeshwa nini? Mawe, akambiwa, badilisha iwe nini? Hello? The same, same thing that Adam failed, now Christ is being tested again. Akaletewa nini? Mawe, anambiwa sasa, si ugeuza iyo mawe, kwa mana he had fasted for 40 days and nights. Yes, juu kama kuna mtu waneza pitisha siku mbili hapa, bila chakula. Kuna mtu? Eh? Ama bado, naona kuna watu ambao ni mara katika neno, buwanesu wa sifio. Kama we wezi pita lunch, tafadhali, jikaze. So, this test was brought to him. Akambiwa sasa, geuza mawe, iwe mkate. Yes, wali muambia nini? Hello. Hakuanza kumfunga shetani. Hakuanza kumkemea, lakini alimsomea maandiko. Bwanesu asifiwe. Kitu cha kwanza atutafika hapo. Kitu cha kwanza ambao unapaswa kufanya ni kuelewa maandiko. Ili uweze kumshinda shetani na ufanyike kuwa kamili katika mwili wa Kristo, you must have a clear understanding of the word of God. Wanesu asifiwe. The second test was kwa haraka haraka najua tumesoma Biblia wote. So nilisema leo tuna tunapitia tu. Jaribio la pili lilikuwa e, Kale bata wewe. Eh, alipelekwa juu akaambiwa jirushe. Na malaika watafanya nini? Pride of life. Because he was the son of God. Angejigonga kifuwa seme mimi ni mwana wa mungu. Hata ni kijirusha. Malaika elfu moja watatumu wa wanichukwe kabla ni kwae. Lakini bado alirudi kwa maandiko. 
na kamwambia haufai kumjaribu bwana Mungu wako bwana Yesu asifiwe jaribio la tatu lilikuwa kwamba alipelekwa mahali juu he was taken to a high place akaoneshwa everything in the world bwana Yesu asifiwe and satan was right to tell him that all these are mine alikuwa na haki kwa nini because we had sold our birthright in genesis to him till today he is the ruler of the earth and we have to fight day and night ili tuweze ku reclaim our position as the rightful rulers of this earth bwana yesu asifiwe na yesu alimwambia nini hapo ndiye alimkemea sasa bwana yesu asifiwe so these three things are tested in our lives day and night bwana yesu asifiwe uko tayari kuweza kukoma Je uko tayari kuweza kukua hadi kiwango ambao Mungu anataka kwa maisha yako? Are you ready? If you are ready, you must observe these three things in our lives. Because the Bible is directing us uh, in the book of 1 John 2:16. That is where you find all these three things. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Utaandika tu mahali utaenda usome nyumbani 1 John 2:16. This is where you find these things. And let us continue to dwell. Now, I, I'll take us to four steps for us to mature there are four things that we need to do for us to become perfect sons for us to mature and reach a level of having dominion the first thing that we should do we should grow ourselves in the word of god Bwana Yesu asifiwe. We should grow in the word of God. In the book of Acts 2017, you discover that the early church spent quality time in the word. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. There are two incidences in the Bible that I love in the book of Acts. Mi ucheka kila wakati. The first incidence ni ya Eutychus. Wangapi wanajua Eutychus? Eutychus alikuja kwa ushirika. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. He came for fellowship. Na akakaa juu kwa dirisha. Mguu mmoja iko nje na ingine ndani, apigwe na baridi, akibarizi kidogo neno ikifunzwa. And the Bible says that Paul took time, spent time in teaching them the doctrine. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Alichukua kama masaa sita na zaidi. Huyu jamaa baada kwa pale juu ya dirisha yeye ako nje ako ndani haelewi nini ambayo inaendelea na usingizi kamshika Bwana Yesu asifiwe what was happening in the upper chambers they were spending time in the word of god when this guy akafika ka usingizi kakamlemea alitoka third floor akagonga chini na akakufa Bwana Yesu asifiwe and paul ran akamlalia lakini akaambia what do not be worried for life has not yet left him Muchukua mumweke wapi pale pembeni hakumwombea fufuke ah ah alichukuliwa kama vile na ubiri niseme mweke pale akae pale akiwa amekufa nusu mfu na nusu, nusu hai bwana Yesu asifiwe and he continued to teach the word of god bwana Yesu asifiwe and that is how the early church grew after teaching the word spending time in the word aliwaambia endeni muamshe maana tumemaliza bwana Yesu asifiwe we have uticuses in our churches today People that are coming to church they are not ready wanafurahishwa tu na mziki. Eh? Woshi amecheza hiyo drum, amesikia nice. After hapo he or she is not concerned of what is being taught. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. It is my desire and prayer that all of us may grow in the word of God. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. It is my desire uh, that we may go, grow. Biblia nasema kwamba in the day of the Lord there is provocation. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Ni wangapi wanaweza simama mtu akisimama na ahubiri kitu ambacho hawakubaliani nayo na aende afanye research. Wangapi weka mkono juu. If I say something contradicting whatever you believe, leo utaenda ufanye research. Wangapi watafanya hivyo? Eh hey, wengine tunakasirika na tunaenda. Ukikasirika that is one character of religion. 
Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Maana Yesu alikuwa akiwaambia kitu, wanakasirika na wanataka kumuua. Haleluya. Siku ya leo let me challenge you. Let us be like the Bereans. When Paul went to them, that is in the book of Acts 17. Unaweza andika uende usome hiyo hadithi. When Paul went to them and was teaching them the word of God. Anawafunza anawafunza these people walikuwa namwangalia eh 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 na wakamwambia ni sawa kila ambacho umefunza ni kweli but give us time that we may go and do research then we will come back and tell you our answer Bwana Yesu asifiwe and Paul gave them the room to go and do that these people went back to their houses they did research they did study the word of God and for sure whatever Paul had taught them was true na wakakuja wakaambia Paul kile ambacho umefunza ni kweli Bwana Yesu asifiwe so today nawaomba let us be like the Bereans let us be the Bereans of today Bwana Yesu asifiwe that when you hear something that is contradicting that when you hear something that is not right with the word unarudi kwa neno unaperus and you help someone Bwana Yesu asifiwe kwa maana when uh, the false, uh, false prophet wanakuja wanafunza the false teachers wanakuja wanafunza kitu hawakufunzi peke yako wanatufunza tukiwa wengi let it be a de- our desire that we may help others Bwana Yesu asifiwe kwamba tusaidiane moja kwa mwingine ukisikia kitu uh, iko sawa unarudi unaangalia unaangalia maandiko unaenda pale Acts Peter pale New Testament Old Testament find what is right and help a brother in the body of Christ Bwana Yesu asifiwe because God requires that we may grow in the word. There is a person in the book of Acts 8 called the Ethiopian eunuch. Most of us are in that level. That we read the Bible and we don't have the revelation. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Imagine this guy alisoma Biblia kutoka Ethiopia mpaka Jerusalem akijuzamani hakukuwa na ndege. So ako pale kwa punda ni, ni neno tu anasoma Isaiah lakini haelewi what the bible is saying and this reached god until akaambia philip no go to this man ako mahali fulani wa fulani go to him explain to him whatever that he is reading bwana sifiwe desire to read the word desire to be impacted with the word and God has anointed preachers in this house God has anointed people in this house that will help us understand whatever that we have read Bwana Yesu asifiwe Maana mchungaji akisimama hapa kwetu na lisaa moja atapitia tu haraka lakini kuna kitu ambacho atakisema kama ulikuwa umekisoma utakumbuka na useme aha kumbe inamaanisha hivyo that is how God and the spirit works in us Bwana Yesu asifiwe Praise God so let us be readers of the word of God Bwana sifiwe. There were two people after Christ was crucified. Two disciples that were on the road to a mouse. Bwana sifiwe. And these people in the book of Luke 13 to 22, naweza enda usome hiyo kaadithi kidogo. They were discussing, eh eh, ah, ujamame ameuliwa. Eh hey, hey, walifanya mbaya nini? Wanaongea. They were just making stories of what had happened. Bwana sifiwe. And Christ Jesus Christ drew nigh to them. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Yesu anatembea tu pale na hao anauliza ala nini nimefanyika paka mmoja akamwambia eh are you a stranger in Jerusalem that you don't know what has happened to Jesus Christ? Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Not knowing that the person they are talking to is the same person that was crucified three days ago. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Most of us are in that level that we have Jesus but we don't know that he is there with us. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. If you read the whole of that story uh, in, 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 the, in the book of Luke 24, you discover that Christ took them back to the days of Moses. He started explaining to them from the days of Moses. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Akawaleta pole 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 na alikuwa anawaleta kwa nini? Kwa maandiko. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. The two disciples hawakuwa green kwa maandiko, they knew the word, but they had no revelation of who Christ was. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. So today it is my prayer and desire that all of us from Monday to Saturday tupitie tu maandiko. Let us read. 
That when the pastor stands here on Sunday and explains, he will open our eyes. The Bible says that when Christ had revealed them to, uh, this to them, their eyes were opened and said, Ah, kumbe ni wewe. And immediately, Christ vanished. So, desire, desire to sink deeper in the word of God. Secondly, the spirit of God. In the book of 1 John 2.27, 1 John 2.27, We should desire that the Holy Spirit may dwell in us. As he's opening there, there is something that Christ told his disciples in the book of John that for a little while I'll be gone and a little while I'll be with you. I am going to send a helper. Now, 27 says, the anointing you received from him remains in you. Another translation says that the teacher you received from him remains in you. Hello. Christ sent, God sent the Holy Spirit. And he came down in the day of Pentecost. Na alikuja in form of whirlwind na fire that rested on their head. Now, all of us are supposed to to have the spirit of God in us. How will they know that we are the sons of God? How will they know that we are different from other religions? If you don't have the spirit of God in you, you are just a mere religious woman and man. But the difference, something that is differentiating us from the religious men or from the people of the world is the spirit of God. You must be full of the spirit so that you can know, so that you can have the revelation of the word of God. If you have to understand this word, if you have to live a holy life, if you have to walk in a way that is pleasing to God, you have to have the Holy Spirit in you. For he is the only teacher that will teach you all truths. And you don't need any man to teach you the truth. And what is the truth that the Spirit is coming to teach you? Christ said that I am the way, the truth. Hello. And how can we find the truth? The book of John 1 when it says that in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. 14 says that and the word became flesh and dwelt amongst men. So who is this word? The word is Christ Jesus. Let me explain something small about the Trinity and how it works. Uh, let me use an example of a doctor. Daktari akiwa hospitali wagonjwa wanamuitaje daktari si ndio akifika nyumbani kama ni mama hakuna watoto wake anaitwa nani mami si ndio mzee akiingia wakienda anaitwa nani ah si anaitwa darling mke nini hawa ni watoto tofauti watatu ama ni mtu mmoja Hello. Kwa hivyo in the Trinity it is one person in three different forms. Bwana In the Old Testament God the Father was doing everything but Christ was a shadow. Bwana Swasifiwe. There are incidences in the Old Testament that Christ appeared. One of the incidents is when Jacob was wrestling with a man. If you read there in, in the book of Genesis, you discover that Yakobo alipigana na Yesu Kristo. Because that is God incarnate. 
Bwana Yesu asifiwe. When the three men visited Abraham, wakienda kuchoma Sodoma na Gomora. There is a place that Abraham was left behind with one of them. Na anamuitaje? My Lord. Abraham knew that this is God. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. So in the Old Testament, God the Father was operating in full swing. Now we come to the New Testament, the uh, in the dispensation of Jesus Christ. Now God had to take the form of man in John 1:14. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. He became man so that he can live as man so that we can emulate and mature. He became an emblem of how to live a righteous life. For 33 years. Mungu alikuwa na watu pale. Matembea tu. The Bible says that the boy Jesus grew in wisdom and favor before men. Hello. He found favor before men and he grew and found favor before God. So everything that Jesus did, now this is God incarnate. Now coming to the third part, God is becoming a spirit. And he is not living with us, but he is living in us. Hello? So we have to let the spirit live in us. Now this is God not living with us again. Kwa maana Yesu aliishi hapa ulimwengu, alikula, alienda kwa bafu akaoga, alifanya kila kitu ambao unafanya. Lakini akaambia ninawatumia msaidizi and the world will not see him, but you will see him. How will you see him? You will receive power. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. How will you know that you have the spirit of God in you? You will receive what? Power. Hello? When it's in Acts 19, from verse 14 to 15, there are these sons of Sceva. And uh, I love what these, people, uh, these young men do. They were seven in number. They decided, ah, to meona Paulo akifanya hii mambo bana. Anafunza. Anashika watu na mapepo inatoka. So they also decided that let us go and try this. When it's Ningependa mchungaji atuweke in numbers one of these fine days. Tuende nje. Tufukuze mapepo. Eh? Tuhubiri injili. Alafu tuone kama kuna watu hawatarudi kama the sons of Skefa. Hello. What was the difference between the sons of Skefa and Paul? Paul was full of the spirit of God. Mwanesu asifiwe. God, Paul understood his position as a son. But these sons of Skepha, when they went and reached this young man, wakanza kuwamba wakamuambia, come out you demons in the name of Paul, Allah. In the name of Jesus that Paul preaches, Allah. Mapepo ni yakaambia, okay, Paulo, tunamujua. Uyu Yesu munasema pia, tunamujua. Lakini, who are you? Kabla wajibu, walikuwa metandikuwa. Nimbio na nduru zilikuwa zinawakomboa. Bwanesu wa sifiwe. So today desire that you may be full of the Holy Spirit. For he is the DNA that proves that you are a child of God. Bwanesu wa sifiwe. The sons of Tzkefa wakati waliulizwa, who are you? Kwa mana tumeangalia DNA yenu. Ah ah, you are not of that kingdom. Bwanesu, you are just mere men. Na ndio maana waliambia Paulo ni wa hiyo ufalme Yesu Kristo ni wa hiyo ufalme lakini who are you are you a child of this kingdom ama we ni joy rider unakuja kutuzindikisha wale ambao sisi ni wana Hello Tamani before the day ends tamani kujazwa na Roho Mtakatifu That is the second thing that you need and the third is prayer For you to achieve whatever you want to achieve in this process of becoming, you have to be a man, a woman of prayer. 
Wachungaji kila siku, kila juma, wanatuimbia, o oh, tafadhali, o oh, tafadhali, o oh, tafadhali, muje tuombe. Kutoka saa tatu, o oh, tafadhali, kujeni tuombe Wednesday, o oh, tafadhali, ah ah, hautaki. Utawachwa. Mana yesu siku ikikuja kuna moja atanyakuliwa na mwingine atachwa. Kuna wawili watakuwa melala, moja atachukuliwa, mwingine achwe. Bile nasema kwamba watu wengi wataenda wamuambie buwana. Tumefanya mengi kwa jina lako. Lakini atawambia aje, ee, eh, eh, si wajui. Buwana iswa sifiwe. In Matthew 6, 9 to 13, you can go and read. The Lord's, you discover that God, uh, Jesus Christ, was teaching his disciples how to pray. And he gave them a formula. On how to go before the Lord. Boneswa sifiwe. Said our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who trespass against, against us. Boneswa sifiwe. Hiyo ilikuwa formula. Hello? Hiyo ilikuwa nini? Formula. Kwa hivyo leo ukienda nyumbani tafakari vile unaombanga is it the same with the formula that Christ gave Bwana Yesu asifiwe in, in the book of Matthew 6:58 most believers today are praying like the heathens And how do they pray Hello They stand in public places they pray with loud voices Hello. But yes, we anasema kwamba whatever you do, ukionyesha, you have received the reward of your prayers. Bonesu asifiwe. So if we are to pray accurately, according to the word, we should go back to the Lord's prayer. Praise the name of God. We should look, equate our prayers with that formula. There is something interesting that Jesus used to do every night after preaching. Alikuwa naenda na wanafunzi wake, anawacha. Anenda na inaitua kitchen cabinet. Sinaitua hivo. Anenda na John, James, and Peter. Anasonga nao zaidi. Akifika hapo, anawacha. Anenda peke yake. These are the three levels of prayer. Lakini kile inanishangaza na wanafunzi ni kwamba walishi na mungu. Lakini hawa kujua kile ambacho aliwambia. Lakini kuna mahali aliwambia all these things that I've done, you may not understand. But the spirit is coming to teach you so that you can understand them. The first level of prayer is the communal prayer. Na ndio hila alikuwa naacha wale wanafunzi wengine atisa na wambia bakini ha? Hawakuwa wanafaa kubaki walale ama kukula mandazi na kufanya kitu kingine. Walikuwa nafaa kusalia wakiomba. Bwanesu asifiwe. Anasonga na hawa wengine. The likes of John, Peter and James. Akifika mahali anawambia nyinyi munabaki wapa. Wapi? Hapa. Now these are the partners that we pray with. Hello. For those that are married, your husband or your wife is your partner. Ama mneza reach out to few friends that you pray together. Bwanesu asifiwe. And now there is the third level. That Jesus used to do. He went himself. Akiwa peke yake yonder and prayed alone. Hello? Do you practice all these three things? As a believer for you to mature and you to grow in the word. You have to practice all these three levels of praying. Bwane sifiwe. Kwa mana tunaitajiana, uh, methali anasema kwamba, moto moja ukiacho peke yake utapoa. Lakini kuni zikiwekwa pamoja, moto utawaka. Bwaneswa sifiwe. So we need each other in this journey, in this process of becoming sons. Bwaneswa sifiwe. Praise the name of God. So you need to empower each other in this journey. You need to take and spend time alone now in prayers. A level, uh, there are levels that we will not reach if we don't spend time in prayers. 
There are levels that we will be desiring. Eh? Unaona tu fulani anatembea kwa kiwango fulani. Unatamani. Kwa nini? You are not practicing prayer. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. So, let us embrace when we are told when announcements are made that let us come and pray oh mara moja friday half kesha let us come and pray together please avail yourself for those four or five hours let us pray together let us build the body of christ together one is was if you and lastly fasting Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Hello? Fa? Na fasti yetu ni tofauti. Si kama ya wale ndugu zetu wengine. Ya unajinyima chakula. Kifika saa fulani unakula. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. If you do that hiyo mnaitanga hunger strike utakuwa unafanya tu hiyo but you have to do everything when you have the knowledge of the word bwana yesu asifiwe you'll have to deny yourselves the pleasures of the body si chakula tu bwana yesu asifiwe there are those things that you cannot do without nasikianga wazae hawezi kaa siku kama wajaona news waone ruto alienda South Korea akachukua loni ya ngapi? Hiyo. Waone Raila alisema, yani una these are the things that you love and you leave them. Bonesha sifiwe. For your flesh to subject itself under the leadership of the spirit, you have to be a prayerful person and someone that fasts. Now in the book of Isaiah 1 in the book of Isaiah 58 write it somewhere you'll go and read kwa sababu it's a long text wende usome tu yote there is something interesting Isaiah is introducing another level another standard of fasting bwana yesu asifiwe from verse 1 to around 4 the, the, god is describing Isaiah is describing uh, the fast that we are doing bwana yesu asifiwe hii ya kuacha chakula unaomba ya kufanya nini unaacha But around verse 6, 5 there, he is introducing another standard. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Biblia inasema kwamba is ya Mungu anauliza is this not the fast that I'm pleased with? Bwana Yesu asifiwe. So, which is the fast that God is pleased with? Of doing justice? That is the fast. If you do justice, you are fasting. According to Isaiah 58. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. If you help the needy you are fasting according to Isaiah 58 and this is a level that God is pleased with and I told you today that let us desire to come out of the level of being children in the body of Christ and let us reach a level of maturity Bwana So if today you deny yourself something small and give it to the needy you have fasted before God Hello? Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Tukisema leo tujinyime kidogo kuna wayatima mahali kuna wajane mahali kuna wazee mahali fulani wanahitaji kitu fulani. Tuseme tutakosa chakula leo siku mbili ili tuwasaidie wale. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. That will be a level that is pleasing God. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. So let us desire These are the four levels that are these are the four things that are helping us mature in this life. Bwana asifiwe. Kwa hivyo tamani tamani. It is my prayer this day that all of us may mature. Natamani kwamba tunaweza fikia kiwango ya wote tunafanyika kuwa kamili kama kanisa. Nikigeuka hivi naona ndugu Maishi. Nikigeuka kwa maana wote tutakuwa tumefanyika kamili. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. And all that will be for the edification of the body of Christ. Praise the name of God. So the four things are let us understand the word of God. Hii Biblia yetu tunawekanga inagongwa na vumbi. Juu kasimu kamekam 
So unapitia pale kidogo. Ukiwa unasoma word, message ya WhatsApp na kam. Unafungua message, unasoma. Unasahau ulikuwa unasoma maandiko. Tafadhali. Penda hii. Hata kama yangu ni kubwa kidogo, tafuta kale kadogo kenye unaweza beba. That when you find kanafasi pale kazini, fungua kidogo, soma Luka. Soma Jeremiah. Soma Mwanzo, soma Ayubu, read. Soma tu. Jumapili mchungaji akisimama hapa, there was a time we were discussing with someone ambao tunafanya naye kazi is a friend of mine called Kioko. So we were discussing, eh tukiwa kazi, tunapiga si upenda kuongea siasa na neno. So pale tuko kwa neno kidogo tuna discuss and we were at, uh, going to have a, a, a service in the evening. Na tukaenda hiyo church. So whatever we were discussing in the morning. This guy alikuwa ametoka US. And a prophet Vimalsha. So the guy was preaching. Alafu tunaangaliana was he reading our mind? Was he with us? Mali pe tulikuwa from verse to verse the preacher was speaking and we were like ah unasikia tunangoja anatupeleka mathayo the same same verses that we were discussing this man alikuja aka expand na akafunza zaidi to a level that ambao hatukuwa tumefikia bwana sifiwe so kwa hiyo mkutano yote maybe alikuja kwa ajili yangu na rafikia kwa sababu whatever we were discussing the spirit of god alitusaidia na tukafunuliwa zaidi so today it is my prayer let us not be like uticus tafadhali tusikue uticus wa leo let us be the bereans bonesha sifiwe people that desire to sink deeper in the word of god people that will desire to sink deeper in the knowledge of the word of god bonesha sifiwe as i conclude let us love prayer Bonesha asifiwe Tupende nini Na nimeambia tuko na three levels The first level na tusilenge ni ya communal Najua kwamba mnaombanga mkiwa peke yenu but let us embrace this communal prayer That when the church leadership announces that we are having prayers in church tutakuja kwa pamo Bonesha asifiwe Asubuhi saa tatu hiyo program haikuwe kwa hapo bure. Uongozi walikaa chini wakasema kwamba mimi wewe mwingine mwingine tunafaa tukuje saa tatu ndio tuombe pamo tafadhali ninawaomba nimetumia neno tafadhali let us embrace prayers. Mungu awabariki. Asanteni kwa kunisikiza. Amen. Thank you Isaac and the Lord bless you let's appreciate the Lord for you seeing our brother in such a mighty way you know one thing that i like is once you have a heart of service god will use you regardless of your age hallelujah that kind of word even the theologians most of them they cannot bring it out but because of being ready to be used of the lord he has means that to us may the lord bless you lift you more and use you more those are the future future pastors that are in coming hallelujah we will not remain to be just two of us we will not remain to be just having one 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 here the other we will have a pool of 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 ministers and these are the ones that our timothys are upcoming hallelujah and don't be left out there don't sit just back to to just watch and say oh i zoon ndio ufanya julie ndio ufanya how ndio mama styling wa youth we we have all of you and we want to mentor all of you even the men the ladies and the church at large bonus for sir and in connection with that word the process of becoming if i may ask what do you want to become what do you want to become in the vineyard because the lord has placed us and given us the aspect of responsibility the responsibility to win souls the responsibility to grow one another the responsibility to pray for one another what do you want to become hallelujah because god has given you 
the aspect of dominion. He has placed something in you. There is nobody who is there. Is, there is nobody in our midst who is who is unable to do something. You can do something in the house of the Lord. So just discover what is in you. Hallelujah. Even if it's just to come and arrange the chairs, if that is what you feel you can do, come and do it because the Lord wants to use you. The Lord wants to help you to become what you want to become. Hallelujah. In appreciation to that word, we just tell the Lord to help us. The areas that we struggle with, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the high, and the pride of life. Those are the three areas that we have not yet conquered. There is no perfect person in all those areas. If Jesus was tempted in that, in that form and he overcame, he, we will also overcome. Hallelujah. Let us not be like Adam and Eve who were tempted and they just fell. Tuwe kama Kristo. Alisema katika hii dunia mtakuwa na majaribu mengi. Lakini mjipe moyo kwa sababu ni meshinda. Hallelujah. Kwa hivyo hakuna jaribu litakuja ambalo Kristo mwenyewe akuliona. Hallelujah. Kama alijaribiwa na tamaza mwili ambazo si, tamaza mwili sio uzizi peke yake. Tamaza mwili ni hiyo tamaa ya kupenda hicho chakula kilo napenda. Kila ambacho mwili yako inatamani zaidi. That is the, 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 the last of the flesh. Kila ambacho unatamani kuona zaidi. That's the, fle- the, the last of the, of the eyes. Hallelujah. Macho ya napenda kuona vitu vibaya. Macho ya napenda kuona pale ambapo kuna uovu ndipo macho ya napenda zaidi. Na kwa sababu ya hayo tunajaribiwa kila wakati kuvutwa kuingizwa kwenye hiyo hiyo tamaa kutamania kuona kutamania kuangalia na unakuta kwamba shetani anafurahia wakati anakuta umeanguka katika hiyo eneo and then kiburi cha maisha pride of life that you want just to be seen that i'm the best i'm the only person who can do it i'm i'm the only you see when the the word i comes in you so much Know that the enemy is trying to pull you in his category. You know when he elevated himself and said, I will become, I will become, I will become like the most high, I will become. Then the pride overtook him and he lost his place. And I know how has to lose our place in God because of pride. We need to be in the presence of God every now and then that the Lord will use us and the Lord will help us. So in your prayer, tell the Lord to help you to overcome the, the last of the flesh, to, have, to overcome the last of the eye and the, and the last of and the, the pride of life because those are the areas that the enemy knows very well. That if you are not well grounded in prayer, you are not well grounded in the word, you are not, you are not there even to, to deny yourself and to fast and to push yourself further that the enemy can easily come and overtake you. So, in, in, in a short moment, let us just raise up our hands and tell the Lord to minister to us and to help us because we have not yet reached perfection. We, we are still walking and, 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 and moving forward. If the Paul said that he wants to strive himself to reach the goal. My brother, my sister, we have not yet reached the goal. We are still striving and we are, we are still working on our salvation with fear and trembling that we may be able to reach the goal. So just tell the Lord to use you, to minister to you and to help you to overcome those three, area, three areas. Bwana tunakuja mbele zako. Tunasema asante kwa ajili ya neno lako. Asante mfalme kwa kutumia Bwana ndugu yetu kutuhudumia siku ya leo. Asante kwa hilo neno Roho Mtakatifu tunashukuru kwa ajili ya uwepo wako na kwa ajili ya neno lako ambalo limekuja katika uzima na katika nguvu. Na nashukuru kwa ajili ya, ya, ya ushindi ambao Bwana umetupatia. Nazidi Bwana kuomba kila mmoja wetu ukatuhudumie Bwana. Ukatuwezeshe, ukatutie nguvu, ukatuonekanie mfalme, uka nene na mioyo yetu na ukatusaidie katika maisha yetu tukashinde tukashinde tamaa tukashinde kila aina ya uofu katika jina la Yesu falme we ni mwaminifu naomba Bwana ukaonekane naomba falme ukatembelee kila mmoja wetu katika jina la Yesu Kristo 
mfalme wewe ni mwaminifu naomba bwana ukaonekane na kemea kila aina ya uovu ambayo shetani angependa kuleta maishani mwetu katika jina la Yesu falme ukatuhudumie bwana ukatuonekanie tukashinde mwili tukashinde tamaa tukashinde kila aina ya uovu katika jina la Yesu Kristo bwana wewe ni mwaminifu tunaomba bwana ukaonekane Noma bwana ukashughulikie kila mmoja wetu ukatutie nguvu ni kwa maana wewe ni mwaminifu hakuna kama wewe bwana hudumia kila mmoja wetu bwana nena na mioyo yetu bwana ukatuongoze ukatushindanie mfalme ni kwa maana wewe ni mwaminifu bwana tunasema asante ni kwa maana hakuna Mungu kama wewe wewe ni mwaminifu tunaomba bwana ukaonekane na ukatushindanie We bless you this afternoon. We thank you Lord for there is none like you. Jehovah, we just need you more. We need your presence, we need your power. We need your grace, O oh Lord. And I pray the Lord you come through. Touch our lives, O oh God. We worship you, Jesus. There is none like you. You are worthy. We lift your name, O oh God, and we exalt you. There is none like you, Jesus. Touch our lives, O oh God. We just surrender to you Jesus. Would you touch our lives? Would you guide us O oh Lord? Help us Lord. We are not yet perfect in your presence but Lord by your grace I pray the Lord you will minister to us and that you use us in a special way. Holy Spirit, we need you more. And I pray that by your power you will touch our lives and you will impact us with your power. Would you touch each and every one of us in every detail of our detail of our lives i pray that your power will manifest that you will touch us and that you will equip us according to your grace we lift you jesus we honor you and we exalt you for there is none like you as in jesus name that we do pray and I give thanks amen and amen let's appreciate the lord He is faithful. He is a mighty God and we need to walk in his presence. Hallelujah.